uh, based on hearing these talks uh, this morning. So what I got excited about in your uh, talk was the existence of this surface density enhancement, which to my mind looks like a, a torus or some, some, some place where maybe there, there are enough gradients in the, in the, uh, in the flow that you could, you could actually get um, trapped standing waves, perhaps, because there are, there are sufficiently strong radial gradients maybe compared to the wavelength of, of, a, of, a, of a wave that could be trapped in that. So, and the other thing that was nice about it is that it only exists for certain accretion rates as you dial the accretion rate up and down. So maybe this would be a way of just producing high frequency QPOs, uh, but only sometimes, not all the time, because this, this feature only exists transiently. Yeah, but, uh, but, but, oh, go ahead. Let, let, let me comment. Yeah, yeah, no, that's what this is supposed to be. They, this, this is just the start of the discussion. This is a stationary model. Yes. So uh, I do agree with all you said, except that I do not know how it could be possibly connected to standing waves in a stationary model. Uh, for the same reason that we think if we form an inner torus, then, or we used to think that okay, maybe that would be a way of. It just can you? Yeah. It, is this is this thing? Is this place, feature? It's, it's a place, place exactly. Yes. Okay. And and the place that even has a fairly well-defined radius n near the ISCO, I gather. Although there was some confusion over that. Uh, so yeah. where, where is this thing? I, because we were still confusing Schwarzschild radii with Schwarzschild. gravitational oh, radii. So once you, say, oh, once sorry, once you said it was, uh, yeah. it was okay. Schwarzschild, I think, and then later on it was, and it was, it was mass? Or now let me say that, that features occur just outside the ISCO, just outside the gravitational radii. Three Schwarzschild. No, 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 he's using a different definition of gravitational. Well, uh, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry. Gravitational is M and Schwarzschild is human. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. You define this thing, so you yeah. tell me. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Just outside six and a half from heavy. Is that yes, correct? So okay. So that's but the of that's course, the when, when we increase this black hole speed, it comes close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But okay, so it's just outside. Better yet, let's go. Yeah, that's, so that's Which is a perfect spot to locate high frequency QPOs, right? That's where we so all. Do you have well, if it would be not just outside, but just it, it's what? I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay. Okay. I'm just outside. Time to put enough effort to go deeply inside. But um, yes, um, some time ago we, um, we started a collaboration with people, a group of people working in Warsaw doing practical structure of partition grids. And they also get some profiles for surface density, and they get exactly the same speaking surface density as we do. Mm. So this is not a feature of our approach. It must be kind of physical. But, well, I'm quite surprised that uh, solving equations that were written down 10 years ago, we find something which is still not understood enough. Yeah, so, so another question I had. So, um, the equations that you're solving are essentially the, the same equations that were solved by Gami, Popham, and Narayan, exactly. or some permutation of, that, mm -hmm. of those authors. But they, but they did not see this feature, or did, is it because they didn't explore enough the parameter space? Or? Uh, that's, that's the point. Where okay. At that time, I guess it was not possible to explore the full parameter space. And, to, well, I would say we were lucky to explore the proper range, and now we use the relaxation technique, and computers are much faster so we can do whatever and if we hit that range of mass accretion rates which produces such feature. Okay. But so I think if if we're all to truly get excited about this and and, uh, and even start exploring this possibility, one would like to know what what is physically causing it. Uh, and that, that I gather, it, so at the moment you don't know, it's just that you see this when you solve the equations, but you don't know what's causing this feature, yeah. is that right? Yeah. But I'm sure we will work on this as soon as possible. I'm sure you will. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but then uh, I would like you also to comment also on uh, what you do with colleagues in Shaman, because these are stationary equations. Mm -hmm. 
but there is a non-stationary version of this equation, also fully uh, incurred. And uh, I remember that when we were uh, discussing this with Ramesh, this feature uh, in Gettelburg recently, uh, you told us that there is also something in this non-stationary, that, that, that there is kind of a bump in non-stationary models, transient bump. Yeah, so the idea of that non-stationary approach is that for also for some range of uh, mass accretion rates, our uh, stationary solutions are not stable because of thermal instability. So when we put such a solution, uh, which is not um, perfectly, which is not the perfect solution, it can be considered a bit perturbed, then in a non-stationary um, set of equations, we've got um, a kind of limit cycle starts. Uh, and uh, there occurs a peak of, of surface density which goes outward. And uh, finally, it, uh, uh, it disappears. And the disk is, comes slowly to the um, original state, the initial state. And uh, well. The what thermal instability the doesn't the exist, though. Yeah, what thermal instability <laughs> are you talking about? Is it the radiation pressure? Yeah, the radiation pressure. Yeah, so, <laughs> so, uh, so I don't believe that that instability is real anymore. Uh, From based on 3D simulations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Nevertheless, the, yeah. The, only the, the fact that the, there is such a peak in that non-stationary uh, evolution comes out from that uh, instability we are talking about, and that instability has nothing to do with solving the stationary equations. Right. right. So I, I can say they look the same. Maybe they've got something in common, because it, um, that, that peak appears close to its goal as well, but their origin must be different. Okay. Am I right? <laughs> yeah. That might be uh, that might be something worth discussing at some later point, at this thermal instability, yeah. because, because there's a, I'll just give you all a, just the basic result. Yeah, yeah. So in the standard uh, alpha disk picture, there's a, this, this is the radiation pressure driven thermal instability. So there, this, this is the slim disk branch over here. This is unstable because, uh, Toby because P rad is large and this is stable over here. And um, we, we now have evidence that the thermal, that this thing is not unstable due to the thermal instability. But if you plot a diagram of M dot versus sigma, we, we've done this much, you still get this shape. Huh. So it suggests, that, it suggests that the viscous instability is real, but the thermal instability is not real, which puts us in a completely different regime now because no one's ever, the thermal instability has always been faster than the viscous instability, so nobody thinks about the viscous instability. But now it, it may be that the viscous instability is real in these high radiation pressure that, that, regimes. That, that was, uh, that's a that's a you said standard. The, the standard understanding yes. uh, was always that these branches both thermally and viscously right. unstable. Right. Right. So, but and then then the consequences of that because the thermal time scale is less than the viscous time is the, the thermal exactly. thing. So it, it does this, of course, and there are these limit cycle models. But that may not be true because the viscous instability may be the only thing that's real. Maybe. But this is a that we should talk about this after I show the evidence for that. The, this, oh, I, want, I want to make sure we talk about these points, or at least the, 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 uh, what we've already discussed. The, the, uh, I don't know what you refer uh, being yeah. clear or not. The thing is, we have set of equations. Yeah. We have set of equations, and these are uh, equations which are uh, describing maybe something unreal, but mathematically they are very real. And all these instabilities and behaviors are mathematically very real. Right? So uh, it may be uh, 
uh, I'm asking you, uh, you are saying in the sense of, of physics that they are not clear. I mean, it has to do, yeah. it, ultimately it has to do with using an alpha, of course. Yes. I mean, if you say an alpha is mathematically very real, then that's fine, of I course, but uh, you're not going to have it. I don't know, but I'm a mathematician. I, I can change alpha to gamma, and it would be like... <laughs> <laughs> What about that? Yeah, but well, the equation, that, I mean, that equation is a really different one. Okay, I really, I, I, should never, I shouldn't have said anything. <laughs> <laughs> been, it, Kristen, you looked at me, and then I thought, oh, maybe I should spill the beans. Well, you, no, you might say that, to some extent, it comes from ver vertically integrating the equation. Because like, some of it is also have to do with the detailed vertical structure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's a combination of... Uh, well, yeah, I would say it's more... Because you have a thermal time scale... Yeah, right, right. So that has to do with the vertical structure. It's, I, I think it's, yes and no, I think it's more a question of, of how how you can get, the, on what time scales the, the thermodynamics of the disk can feed back onto the turbulence, and that has to be a, on longer than the thermal time scale, and that's what breaks the thermal instability, and, what, and the, that doesn't really have much to do with vertical integration. Oh, I see. Uh, yeah, okay, we are not allowed to talk about this, though. Let, let, let's, let's, let's focus on what we learned this morning. Uh, um, so, it, but it's true that the equations you're solving have this thermal instability. Mathematically, they have it, so if you put in the uh, time dependence, you're going to have to face that. And, but what I'm more interested in is, the, is that even if your stationary solution is unstable, it may not, in fact, be unstable. And that, 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 those, that surface density feature might, in fact, be real. Um, so, so one, if you're going to move on, you know, yeah. one of the things I mentioned to yeah. Bomber, but I might as well tell you that this feature cannot be, this is the sense of my question, this feature cannot be sharper than the scale height of this. Because if you put a, a feature that's in density or temperature that's sharper than the scale height of the it disk, will, uh, it will be really unstable. You know, the angular from the, the pressure balance, you take the second derivative for relative stability, and you get this. You can take first derivative, you get a second derivative of the pressure, and so you will break relative stability somewhere. So you might, and this you will not see, even in your time dependent simulation, because you're assuming omega equals omega. Okay? You're not actually solving the, with the, the real field dynamics. So you have to pay attention to how sharp the feature is. Um, okay, but maybe it's, it's just a important to note that. Uh, that features happen in radiation pressure dominated uh, regime, mm -hmm. so that that's peak in surface density does not mean a peak in pressure. Uh, yeah, so that's completely thing. That's, that's true. Actually. So I don't know in a radiation pressure dominated. So yeah, so Christian, yeah. but but this you could answer. You have the you yes. have the angular velocity but profile you of your flow. Yeah. So can you can you just calculate? So this L is r squared omega here. So if you, can you check um, whether this quantity has? It looked okay because it's not so sharp. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, and what is k on the left side, left hand side? The epicyclic frequency. Yeah, the epicyclic frequency squared. I got that right. Yes. So. But that's something you could easily calculate from your data, right? To, um, okay, are there any other? So, I mean, this is the, nobody mentioned this, but I, I you know, yeah, is the, the, could this yeah, form a way? The answer is it's greater than zero. It is greater than zero. Uh, because he calculated uh, the angular momentum distribution, and it is always increasing. So there is not a question. It is greater than zero. So that, that so must greater, that must not greater or, or equal, but greater. That must so be equal to what you said. Because in a gas pressure, the mean is this. That is dynamical instability. Uh, yes. So, okay. Then, then you write it down. Yeah. Let's say you put. Um, some people are doing this in disk with planets, actually, to halt migration now. So this is why I'm paying attention to that thing. If you put a density profile like this, a wall of density, mm -hmm. and you calculate this is r squared omega. OK. Now the balance, the leading order balance in the equation is r squared of r omega squared equals 
Okay, this is R squared omega squared. Is this uh, minus, no, plus 1 over rho dp over dr. So to calculate, you square this somehow, multiply by r cubed, you square it, and you take the radial derivative of that, you're going to have the second order derivative in pressure. The pressure itself is essentially rho t, which is nece not necessarily true in your case. So this is how you can be saved, I think, yeah. But to the extent that you put a steep profile like this in, in your disk, you have second order derivative of rho or t. And you can show that if this, if this is of order h or smaller, these negative terms become order or magnitude, uh, I mean, of same order of magnitude as the other term in this in this expression. This uh, I agree with this uh, arithmetic you, you did. And you don't see that in your... In no, no, no. no. Yeah. But in, he, in his uh, equation, uh, th this... Uh, yeah, you have plus T4, I guess. So that no, changes no, no, things. No, not that this is not defined. Mm -hmm. In this equation, on the right-hand side, of, of, of this equation, r omega squared equals etc. There is also radial acceleration, which is significant. Yes, which is significant. That's true. And that this that is changes things. Talk yes. about yes. some small kind of, and then you yes. have second derivatives of this. Yes, and uh, velocity changes, radial velocity yes. changes sign. So this argument, uh, uh, if there would be now radial velocity, which is no, the argument is still valid. You have okay. to check no, for the... Okay. Yeah, this yeah. is still valid. But you're saying that anyway, you have the profile of specific momentum yeah, and it's exactly. not really unstable. So, so I, I think I it's I not think an issue. Perhaps yes. uh, in your argument, radial velocity should be included. Hmm. Well, because people deal with syn disks, the radial velocity is, is actually uh, but very are we small. Are talking not about syn disks? Well, no, well, my well, interest well, in this problem yeah. is not for black hole equation. So, so but, but, yes, but, but, yes. But, but, but no, I think you're right. But yes. No, wait, wait, wait. But, but it, what is the ratio of the radial velocity to the azimuthal velocity in the region of the surface density enhancement? Do you know? Do you know? <laughs> yes, that is very close to the sunny point as well. But, but I, I think so what's large. Yes, so it, I'm not saying it's large. I, I, I'm saying then forget I don't about this way of counting. It matters or not. <laughs> it may matter. Yeah. But Marek, you, you have the profile of specific momentum and it's stable. Yes. So I think that's when you calculate the specific angular momentum, it's always. Uh, so it's not an issue. Yeah. Yes. Okay, but if it's large, I, I don't believe that they. I, I, I can't believe you can set up a wave cavity in what's effectively a plunging region. Or it's maybe not you can't. Sorry? No, no, no. It is not a plunging region. Sorry? It's it's not not a plunging region. So it's uh, outside I, the I, it's outside the sonic point, but uh, nevertheless okay. VR is but, but the, yeah. there is uh, this uh, uh, you are to telling something different than Kristen. I told Kristen the, the, the story which I think satisfied him. Yes. Okay. Well, I'll be yes. going to tell, then, tell you a story. Then, so <laughs> <that's not laughs> I mean, are you talking about cavities in order to trap waves? Or yeah. Yeah. But you could still have maybe a cavity w which is formed by a planet. No, but we're not uh, talking about planets here. I mean, for yeah, planets, no, this is yeah. very interesting, I think. Yeah. But, yeah. but yeah. For, the planet. for this problem, yeah. I think it's... No, and, and then your cavity. Your cavity. This is still interesting think. for planets. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I it's mean, not the discussion. Yeah, okay, fine. It may not even be working for... May not be working for planets. This, I don't no, know. this is the point. I'm, I'm working on this because people are putting these features, but I uh -huh. don't think they're realistic. So that's that's yeah. how I came to. And, and do, you, do you know actually whether that works for planets? That they can trap waves? Oh, waves? Yeah. Well, no, the point is that people now, because there are dead zones, they are all invoking the notion that there is effective feature, potential. Like so there is this kind of now. And these sharp features uh, will not exist uh, in the real world. Uh, 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 velocity is large. I'm not reading that there is a yes. large overflow, but, but there I is still coming okay. here. That's an effective potential for the fluid. Yes. What, what I want to know is, is more of a, an effective potential for waves. So you, you just, you're, you're suggesting that this is a, this is a, a reflector. Uh, and that would be, so 
If you have no, I, if you I, have I, gradients I, in, the, in the background yes. quantity which are much much shorter than which have length scales which are much much shorter than the wavelength of the wave, then I believe you can get trapping of whatever wave you're interested in. So that that's why the sharpness of this feature was interesting. But I well maybe you can't have waves in there. I don't know. But if it's starting to go transonic, it's hard for me to imagine that this isn't anything but just sucking wave energy out. I mean I can't. How are you going to get a wave in there? Because the once you're going transonic, there are, there aren't any waves that propagate faster than the sound speed. So there's nothing that can you know avoid this waterfall that's that's yeah, going over the left. So that that's what. Okay. So maybe that answers that question. It's an interesting feature, but may, it might not be relevant to QPOs if, there, if there's too much um, radio velocity in there. I, I want to make sure that we address some of these other. So I, actually, I, and I don't want us to go, I, I didn't mean this to go talk by talk by talk. I, so maybe there are lots of interesting issues that are raised by all three of these that are really connected with um, how simulations relate to reality and how models of reality relate to simulations and where, where, where truth might be somewhere in there and it's probably not anywhere, right? Because, uh, because the models are imperfect, they lack MRI physics typically and the, uh, the simulations often lack a lot of thermodynamics, although Mommy's simulation has got some thermodynamics in there. And, and Chris, I don't know whether you noticed this on the archive, but Chris has recently published a paper that's related in, in, in way into uh, Machida and Matsumoto uh, which also has thermodynamics in, in, in terms of optically thin cooling. So there's progress on that front, but, but then again, how does that relate to the observed um, state transitions that we see? Uh, so that, that's one whole set of issues, but, but the, there were particular issues that, so you all know my deep prejudice against G-modes and, and, um, and MRI turbulent flows, but then I wanted to again emphasize that there's this, there's this point that has been raised by Gordon Ogilvy and Barbara Ferreira, who is not here. Um, uh, so we can't talk about that, I guess, because she's the only one who could answer it. <laughs> uh, that, when, that when you tilt disks, or, or we, when you have a tilt or a warp, you, you have a, a way of driving G modes, and maybe that's a way of, of overcoming this turbulent uh, problem. I'm not sure that that's true, but, we, but the simulations that Ken showed appear to still show weak inertial mode features even at high resolution when the MRI is, is fully resolved. And the question is, are those, are those in fact inertial mode features? And, and if so, why are they there, given, given my prejudice against G modes, inertial modes can be present in, in MRI and turbulence? Um, uh, can, uh, yes? Can I just point out that in MRI yeah. simulations, there are inertial modes um, that are very frequently observed? Name one. What, one well, paper? Yes. One paper? Yes. Because <coughs> I, I challenge you to, to, to prove he that. He has a strong opinion on this. Yes. <laughs> but what about the, let me understand it correctly, but um, what about the Gardiner and Stone um, paper? Um, oh, Gardner and Stone? Gardner, right. uh, and also, I believe that I don't think in the very earliest ways. MRI simulations by Barbara Sonoli, they, um, they observed the natural world. No, they observed epicyclic oscillations, which is sort of the highest frequency version of inertial waves. See, those you do see. You can see epi so yeah. Let me make that clear. You can see epicyclic oscillations in the in the presence of MRI turbulence. But G modes, I don't think exist. Um, uh, let, let me finish this this thing so we have a, a broad range of topics to choose from to to, to talk about. Um, oh yeah. Okay. They are the same mode. They are the. Uh, they are inertial gravity. They are the same. As they, the they appear as like kappa squared plus n squared in the distribution relation. So they are the same. Except, I, I guess what you're saying is that they tend to be radial and not. Go right, right. So if you have any, if you have any vertical wavelength, which is what what typically is invoked in the disco seismology yeah. models of QPO of high frequency QPOs, then I claim that those those how, do not exist. How can uh, G modes be the same. I mean, they depend on the entropy. And the entropy profile. If you do a study by rotating atmosphere, you get inertial gravity waves. They propagate slant in slanted waves. Yeah. It's but then you make, chaos. don't you make an assumption then about the entropy profile? Yeah. That's the n squared. The brain by set of frequency. Yeah. Sorry. The I fundamental mean, thing is. It's this frequency plus. plus it's this frequency plus. Brain by set of frequency, which is yeah. a gradient of entropy. Yeah. That's the thing that they're, they're all living off of. Um, 
One thing, uh, this was me uh, speaking through Ken or something, or Ken liked what I, uh, Ken has often asked me why I've had him do this, these sorts of problems of looking at MRI simulations when I do not believe that we're simulating anything like the steep power law state. Mommy might be, might be simulating something like the steep power law state, but certainly Chris's simulations that Ken has been analyzing are not the steep power law state. They aren't. And we know that QPOs only exist in the steep power law state, so what the hell are we doing? And so that, that's why he, he phrased this talk is that, well, we have simulations, we have QPOs observed. I don't know, maybe there's something to learn from, from looking for QPOs in MRI simulations, or maybe not. Um, so uh, a key question is, you know, what is, it, what is it about the steep power law state that allows the existence of QPOs, and what, if we're not seeing them in these simulations, what is it that we're, we need to add in order to see those QPOs? Um, Shin Minashige has, uh, has done a lot, a lot of work uh, over many years now on these uh, self-organized criticality models, so these SAM file models, and has demonstrated convincingly that they can produce the continuum power spectra that are observed. And he showed us this morning about ways in which maybe you can connect magnetic field evolution to, to an SOC model. Uh, it would be nice to have a discussion about whether you can look in the MHD simulations themselves for SOC-like behavior, or what, what might be what might be mocking up a, a, a sand pile cascade. Uh, I would like to comment. Yes, on this. Okay. okay. Because I think that uh, it seems uh, approach. Uh, vertical uh, dimension does not exist, kind of, right? So it is kind of, uh, you are doing this on a plane. Why? It may be that uh, in MHD uh, environment, it is necessary to have uh, uh, yet another dimension. And my question to you, Shin, is uh, you can have these cells arranged in yes. three dimensions, yes. right? It is just easier to do it yes. in two dimensions. Yes. But you could have the same rules in... Have you tried this? Yeah, in the previous model, yes. And there are not so much difference. The two mm -hmm. dimensions we mentioned the same. Yes. But one dimension, it, the completely different. Mm -hmm. that, that only, uh, so there is, no, there, there is no there is no qualitative large qualitative that difference from two D to three D, but of course there is from exception. one to two. Mm -hmm. But but the key question I think that needs to be addressed is that so these they, you could literally construct a sound pile model and you would get a similar power spectrum out. So it, the, the, what, what you have to address is the, the, the physics of the sound pile, that is that there is, well, and, and you also have a diffusion term. So you have diffusion and a critical threshold beyond which you get an avalanche. What are those things in real accretion disks? What, 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 what's actually phys physically producing that threshold? We, I think we understand what's physically producing the diffusion, probably. It's, it's turbulence, but the threshold what is causing that? That's the that's the piece of physics that needs to be identified. Uh, so he's demonstrated that 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 if you if you assume that an accretion disk behaves like this, it will produce the observed power spectrum. But that then begs the question: What is that behavior? How how, how does that arise? Yes, yeah, that's a good point. But uh, at least we know from the simulation of the solar yes, we need yeah. to have some critical number for resistivity. Resisti resisti uh -huh. And then the point one is that there's a on the current velocity, on the, the, the drift, electron drift velocity is a critical number. Then the anomalous resistivity is initiated, which produces a big flare event. Okay. So there should be some critical condition regarding the occurrence of magnetic reconnection. That's what I guess. Is this something that um, uh, would then require um, so this would not occur in, in an optical, in a, in a collisional, it, does it require collisionless conditions in order to have this uh, electron drift velocity be the key quantity? Yeah. Or quasi-collisionless conditions? Yeah. In other words, low densities that it would, yeah. that it, it exists yeah. mainly in the coronal yeah. part of the yeah. flow. Yeah. At least, uh, as far as the magnetic reconnection is concerned, yeah. we, we cannot ignore the present effects. Yeah. I mean, to, uh, regarding the threshold, I mean, if, if the analogy to the sun is really present, then it would be one where we could construct uh, magnetostatic equilibria in the corona of the disk, yeah. as we can for the sun. But these uh, magnetostatic equilibria become unstable if the foot point positions ch have changed significantly. Yeah. And so then you will rush very, very quickly from one equilibrium into a new one. 
And that could be the threshold. You're That's saying. the threshold, yes. Yeah. So these, it's simply, simply the stability of these magnetostatic equilibria subject okay. to um, yeah. minor, yeah. small changes in the foot point motions. And yes, eventually it will that tip that and not, not you're going to... That's the entire story. What? That's that not the entire story, yes. Uh, to, to trigger some energy connection, uh, you need first to uh, lift, lift up the magnetic fields. Uh -huh. But it's not the entire uh, the story. Mm -hmm. we, in, uh, in addition, we need some conditions to trigger magnetic connection. So, if, so even if uh, the uh, uh, anti-part of the fields, if the, the condition is not satisfied, it's still there. Not only if the certain condition is satisfied, rapid magnetic connection occurs to produce a huge energy. Otherwise, always there are small dissipation of magnetic fields which do not produce big flares. To have big flares, we ne you need to wait until certain uh, magnetic energy is accumulated at certain level. So there should be some critical condition to be met to explain large solar waves. Would you place that also into the corona? Yeah, that is, that is a corona. Yeah. In the solar, in the solar corona. And, uh, and is that related to foot point motion changes? No, no it, it's more related to the mi microphysics in the reconnected area. So in the problem. Okay, so but uh, what, 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 what has motion. to be changed then to go to make it unstable? Oh, if it's not the foot point. So, so the current density should increase at, at certain level. So in other words, electron drift density should increase. Uh -huh. Otherwise, the rotation D should increase to get a certain point. So, so, so it's even if you put the energy in the magnetic field, that's not uh, sufficient to produce a reconnection. To have a good reconnection, an intense reconnection, you need to satisfy some co some certain condition regarding the electron drift velocity. That's what we love <laughs> for the Mm -hmm. Simulation, MSA simulation of the solar wave. Mm. And actually, that idea will be used by uh, Mami's simulation. She only turned on the aromas and resistivity in the simulation, only fan the uh, electron drift velocity exceeds certain bound. So that critical behavior is also important. Mm -hmm. So I have not heard about this busy uh, electron drift velocity, but has any, anybody else you know about this? No? Okay. That would be maybe interesting to mm -hmm. understand more properly, but maybe not at this minute. Well, maybe we can, but uh, I mean, do you understand it actually, Shen, or do you yeah. just you're just aware of its existence? I, I yeah, yes, but uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, we have not yeah. Yeah, examined this. Yeah, uh, uh, what uh, is the data? It's not easy. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I should. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then, and then of course, Mami gave her talk on this on this formation of the inner torus. And, um, oh, yes. And uh, Mami wants to show one slide for the summary. For the summary, yeah. Is, is it okay to present it? Oh, that, uh, oh, that tells us about the, the, the yeah, slide that you were suggesting yeah. that she make? Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> that, would be, that would be helpful, uh, yes. Over lunch. Huh? Did you make this over lunch? <laughs> yeah, yes. No. I see. Okay. Uh, I like. I would like to make a summarize of uh, simulation. Uh, so, 
we categorized the torus state and crescent state and transit state between the crescent to the torus. Then, first, the, uh, the radial distribution of angular momentum is uh, torus and crescent shape is uh, yeah. almost flat. But in the B, in the reconnection phase, the magnetic energy released by the reconnection and the outflow and mass agreement takes place in this phase. So the magnetic uh, angular moment and distribution becomes, uh, becomes nearly Keplerian in the reconnection phase. Then uh, after that, the uh, angular moment and distribution return to the flow. Then and, and, and the paparoid of Grindel instability is the in growth in the torus and crescent shape state, but the connection phase, the uh, Kepler, this angular moment and distribution chain to the Keplerian stru structure, then the growth and um, paparoid of Grindel instability dumped. So the M equal one was destroyed and returned to the torus phase. And and, uh, and the, also MRI growth in, the, in our simulation. And the torus and crescent shape is also MRI growth. And then magnetic energy and mass, mass, mass cell stress growth. And, but the, when the reconnection takes place, the MRI and magnetic energy suddenly the, uh, decrease and the MRI also down. And plasma, and in this state, present state, 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 the plasma beta is about one, and magnetic reconnection takes place, and magnetic energy release, and plasma beta becomes also becomes ten or twenty, so ten or twenty, and then return to the MRI growth, the magnetic energy accum accumulated, and in Today I showed only without cooling case, but I already tried to including the cooling. At that time, the temperature te uh, at that time the temperature is uh, when the magnetic reconnection takes place, the temperature be uh, suddenly increase because the magnet dual heating take into takes place in the in the torus. But the cooling is comparable to the heating, so the material temperature becomes temperature degraded and return to the torus phase. This, this is the, my result of my calculation to the about the. This, this What's part. the physics behind this? Yeah. Right, right. Okay. Thank you. So I have a. So there are two questions. You, you don't have to stand or <laughs> continue this discussion. So one, one, one thing is that, as you all saw, uh, Chris's simulations, Christopher Gill's simulations also produce these inner tori, but they don't, they don't form and reform, nor do they, nor do they produce a, a crescent-like uh, perturbation, uh, probably from the papilloids of Pringle instability. They, that, that does not happen in these simulations. So there's a question as to, What's different about these two simulations and the inner torus behavior? Is it because you um, is it somehow related to the fact that you're capturing heating from 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 magnetic reconnection, which is not captured in the in in Chris's simulations? Um, another thing about the about this this physics here, um, uh, I wonder whether this part of the of this of this cycle is essential, or or could you even even if you so, a worry that I have is that the that the MRI typically kills the papilloid supraglial instability if it's very well resolved. So there's a resolution issue, perhaps. Uh, but even even suppose you ran the simulation at high resolution and you killed the papilloid supraglial instability, would that stop this cycle? Because it, what 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 seems to be essential is that you have a growth of magnetic field and then a, a massive reconnection event and then a, a regrowth of that magnetic field. And the papilloid supraglial instability just happens to be there, but it's not essential to this cyclic behavior. Is that is that a possibility, or or is this essential to this cycle? Um, so that's a question. Uh, um, so 
that I would like to know the answer yeah, to. Yeah. Maybe money yeah. about the case of high temperature, this yeah. low temperature. Yeah. Okay. But this occurs only when the temperature ah, yeah. is moderately low. Ah. Yes. Only when. <laughs> right. She already examined the high temperature case. Right. With the cooling, there's no such instability. Right. So, so there's, there's, there's no such, there's no, <coughs> the two things. There's no papilloid supremal instability and there's no cyclic behavior. Is that correct? Both of those things are killed with a high temperature simulation. Only MRI is dominant in high right. temperature case. Right. The high temperature means that 10 to 11 Kelvin in the near inside the sensual shift ready. And low, temp so low temperature means that 10 to 10, almost 10 to 10 Kelvin in the inside the sensual shift ready. Okay. Um, a question that Ken raised at lunch is uh, related. So why why is this? Why in the high temperature thing do you not see? So that's the observed fact the, uh, that you see in your simulations. But the question is why? Uh, do you know why? Do you have an answer to that question? Uh, so why why heat 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 is the So so this is so this is the cycle that you see yes. in the low temperature yes. simulation when it only goes up to 10 to the 11 Kelvin. Uh, so but in because in high temperature model, the inner torus is not created. So it, it is the reason of the... Okay, it's never created. Yes. Okay. Because uh, why the inner torus does it create? It, it, it's, uh, it's because the magnetic stress becomes high in the high temperature model. Yes. So, um, uh, so, so effective alpha, so magnetic stress over <coughs> press gas pressure becomes o over 0.01, then the inner torus doesn't create. But in the low temperature case, the magnetic stress, uh, uh, so in low temperature case and high temperature case, both plasma beta becomes 10. <coughs> so it means the magnetic energy is s small in the high low temperature case, then the magnetic stress also small. Right. So the effective alpha becomes less than 0.01. Right. When the alpha is less than 0.01, <laughs> the torus is a mass accumulated near the inner region, then the inner torus form. <coughs> so, is that yes, the yes, I think, so if I can refer, if I can just summarize what you did, I mean, I'll re-summarize what you just said. So you're, you're saying, Again, I think this is an observed fact from the simulations. When you run it at high temperature, you observe higher stresses. Those higher stresses correspond to higher accretion rates, and there's just no... I mean, it, it's, it's a little complicated, right? Because to form an inner torus, it, it's really... If you, had a, if you had a... If you had constant stress any, everywhere, no matter what the level of that stress was, you would not form an inner torus. It, it, it's really coming from a radial... Um, variation in the stress that, allow, I mean, that allows material to build up. And in other words, why can't the disk, no matter what the stress level is, just process all the material right the way through? So that, that's, a, that's an issue that I've never understood. But, but, but d d despite, beside that, um, so you're suggesting in high stress you just have higher accretion rates and you don't get this, you don't get this build up of material. Okay, but why is that? Why is it uh, that at high temperature you have higher stresses? My suggestion is uh, 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 the the high uh, the tablet uh, the scale height is, uh, the tablet eddy is almost constant to the scale height uh -huh. and when the high temperature case the gas pressure also high then the scale height becomes high then the blood circulation test occur in, so the blood uh, so so that large eddy creates the large stress. But in the low temperature model, the scale height becomes low, uh, s small. Then the s magnetic stress also small. I see. Right, right, I see, I see. I'm wondering whether any that this has ever been observed elsewhere in other simulations. Because the, there's another potential interpretation of this that, I, that concerns me that was raised by Ken at lunchtime. And that, when you have high temperature and a high scale height, so are these run at the same resolution, the same grid resolution, on the same grid, but the low temperature and the high temperature? If you have a higher higher temperature, uh, and suppose the magnetic pressure, you're saying that alpha is basically the, well, you're not saying that alpha is basically the same. 
is, is especially yeah safe. yeah so so the worry was that if you have a if you have um, Suppose at high temperature you had a higher MRI critical wavelength, so the MRI is better resolved. Oh, yes. Then, yes. then you get higher stresses simply because of that. So it's a resolution issue that, that that's hidden by the fact that you have a uh, you have more room to, to fit the MRI in, and that's why you end up with high stresses. Is that a possible interpretation of what well, you're saying? Well, in essence, that's what it's, I mean, it's, it's sort of the same thing. Yeah. Because the disc is thicker, you have longer MRI wavelengths, yeah. and you get these larger edges. Yeah. Okay. Right. So, so, right. So, so, uh, I would encourage you to do a resolution study of what, yes. you're, what, you're, <laughs> yes. what you're saying. Uh, uh, what you're uh, saying is better result for for a hot. Yeah. So if and you decrease the resolution, you should get back the lower temperature. Right. Result, right. Which she does not. Right. Right. So that that that's that's a concern. I don't know whether it, I mean it's a concern. I don't know whether that's really what's happening. Um, but, but this begs another question. So there was a there was a whole MRI conference in Princeton a few months ago where mm -hmm. Steve Balbus, in his in his arrogant way, mm -hmm. said, uh, "Forgive me for saying that." But um, uh, you know, he was very dismissive. Of, <laughs> sorry. Oh, is this being recorded? <laughs> then I, you have to delete that. You, you should. <laughs> I'll turn it off immediately, and then okay, we can yeah, continue speaking <laughs> offline. No, and I'm not. I'm not talking then. Uh, you have to delete that. You have to delete that. I'm. I'm telling you, actually, you have to delete that. You should have warned me that this was being recorded. Um, he said that all mode calculations were a complete waste of time, or, or potentially a, a complete waste of time. Steve Albus, because he. I mean, what did he say? Can you say that again? He said that you know everyone doing QPOs is obsessed about calculating eigenfunctions and eigenmodes, and. How do you all know, and so th th I think this was a really good point, how do you all know that it has anything to do with a, with a mode and not something like a nonlinear dynamo-like activity, which also produces cyclic behavior? We know that that's true in the sun, and that's not some nice hydrodynamic or even MHD eigenfunction. It's a, it's a complicated nonlinear feedback process that produces a cyclic behavior. And this is exactly the sort of thing that Mami is seeing here. Uh, how do we? So a lot of us, maybe <coughs> being applied mathematically oriented, have been maybe barking up the wrong tree because we're only solving the problems that we're capable of solving. But really, it could be a nonlinear feedback process that we can. Which I think was a good point, and that you can record. <laughs> <laughs> so on this, I have a question. So yes, like solar flares are reproducible in any way. Uh, in what? In simulations? No. In, uh, in reality. Flares. Are they reproducible? Uh, meaning, do we? If you see one flare, can you see a, a similar no, flare later on? No, I mean, there are properties. Solar Simulation-wise, you mean? Were you referring to flare or to? No, I was referring to the solar cycle. Yes. Yeah. Which is more analogous to what this is. It's not an. It's not a. It's not a flare. It's a. It's right. a. It's a.